Hello friend, do you have something you really enjoy doing but have stopped doing for whatever reason without even noticing it? So I have. So in this video, I want to share with you how you can find your way back into your lost passions through minimalism, just like I have. But I want to give you more context. About 30 days ago, I was struggling with these two feelings. One of having too much stuff and the other that I don't feel I have enough time to do anything. And as I researched what could help with that, I found minimalism. I decided to get started with this 30 days minimalism game. And today is the very last day. On these 30 days, I got rid of a bunch of stuff and it felt good. All the way from headphones to ice climbing gear. You can see on my previous videos. But today, as I decided to go through my photography gear, something interesting happened. So let me tell you about me and photography. Two of my great-grandparents were Japanese and they migrated from Japan to Brazil and they never really learned how to speak Portuguese. So I remember when I was a kid, my parents would take us to the countryside, which is where the Japanese family used to live. And I was very young. So there were these two figures that I couldn't really connect and relate to much because we didn't speak the same language. And for me, everything was foreign, it was strange going there. But one thing really stuck with me, which was every now and then my great-grandfather would pull up all the kids and gather in this big room. He would sit us all around and bring out the projector. So he had these slide projectors. I have two of them here. We would spend several minutes to hours just flipping through the slides that were projected on this blank screen. And that was the only moment that I really recall connecting with my great-grandfather. Because at that point, language wasn't really a barrier. Everything that he was seeing, I was seeing, and both of us understood what that represented. And for those brief moments, we were really connected as a family. Growing up was business as usual. My parents had one camera we would always take pictures of whenever we traveled, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the kids couldn't really touch the camera. I remember I was always that curious child. Whenever there was an adult with a camera on hand, I would just act curious. And every now and then, one of my cousins or aunts would let me take a peek through the viewfinder. And even at times they would let me click the picture. So knowing of that curiosity I had, this was around when I was 15 years old. I was getting ready to come to America for the first time in one of those exchange student programs. And my aunt Lyria pulled me to the side and said, Hey, Flip, you're going to this one-year trip, probably the trip of your life. Do you have a way to document that? And I asked her, Look, what, what do you mean? She's like, do you have a, a camera? And of course I didn't. So she pulled out of a bag and said, do you want to take this one? And this was a really cool camera for the time. She probably brought from Japan or something like that. It had zoom and all these different features. I was like, whoa. Uh, yes, of course I want it, but are you sure? And she said, yes, totally. This is what cameras are made for. So I got that camera, it was my very first camera. But that is what is behind most of the pictures I have that are my own. So beyond the point of family portraits and family pictures, these were my very first pictures. And I documented a year worth of pictures, my journey to America. And I can show a few of them. Uh, these were the other exchange students in a party. This was me summiting Mount Washington in New Hampshire with the Boy Scouts, Troop 19. I even attempted some artsy pictures, but of course they were crap. And only because tomorrow is Halloween, uh, this was my first pumpkin carving ever. And I remember I would get this allowance that wasn't much money, pretty much was supposed to be covering just school supplies and food in the cafeteria. And I would save up every single dollar I could. I would eat pizza or eat from my friends, things that they didn't want, just so I could save up some money and buy more films. So if you're born after the year 2000, you probably don't know, but we used to load films into cameras that cost money. 
and they would usually only take 12 to 36 pictures. So you have to pay to have them processed. And after they are processed, you would have to pay to have them printed on paper. So that was a really cool process because you really didn't know what the pictures looked like until you had it processed and printed. And if you had messed up, there was just no second chances. You had to nail the picture. It was this like whole mystery around uh, taking pictures and seeing them later. And that's how I got to take as many pictures as I did. And because I was saving money, there was this really cool trendy Polaroid that was launched that year. It was called the iZone. And what this thing did, it would print very small Polaroids, probably the size of your thumb. And this was the thing. I just rushed to the shopping mall and grabbed one. Probably cost me a small fortune for the money that I didn't have. And every stack of film would also cost a small fortune, but I didn't care. This was so cool and so hot. It was instant picture. So in a way it's like today, you, you pull your phone, you snap a photo and you have it. This was the closest you could get to that. But unfortunately, I will never, ever, ever, ever be able to use it again. So it's been collecting dust for nearly two decades. So I think it's time to let this one go. Thank you very much, Izone. It was fun having you around. And you're going to someone's collection, I guess. And when I returned to Brazil, the whole digital picture revolution was really picking up. I remember there were these cameras that you would have a floppy disk into it. You would take, I don't know how many pictures, 10, 12. And that was it, but that was like the coolest thing. And I knew someone that had one. So every time I could, just get my hands on it and take a few digital pictures, I would do it. And that was like the coolest thing ever. But I didn't work, I didn't have any money. There was just like no way I would ever be able to buy one of those. But what happened is, after a few years, the same aunt, as she saw that I was very interested in, in photography, she asked me if I was interested in this other camera she had, which is this one. So th this was a fully manual camera, really old school, but in my opinion, one of the greatest ever. This is a Canon AE-1 program. One of the first cameras that came with this like calculator inside. You can just like hit program here and the camera would do most of it on its own and it has lasted forever. This was my main camera for quite a while. And up to today, this is still one of my favorite cameras. Anytime I need to shoot film, uh, pretty much I do black and white as well as color slides. Is it color slide? What is it called? Uh, chrome, black and white, as well as chrome or color slides, if you will, I still use it. It's a really good camera. So I was shooting with this camera for a long time. As you can imagine, time went by, I started working, started making money. That's what I started spending money on. I bought my first digital camera, which then I didn't use the film ones for a while. And that was super fun. But every now and then I would always default back to the black and white. The way I see this photography thing was really growing into me. And I remember this really important milestone for myself. I was saving up money so I could pay for my first international trip after the US, which was paid by my family. So I had set out this goal and plan and I was really sticking to it. So I had to save enough money to run the trip, but I also wanted to buy a really nice camera in the UK. And I was going there because my best friends were getting married. And this was way before Amazon or anything.com really. So I emailed them and said, hey, I'm really keen into buying this camera. Can you please work out the logistics for me? So I get there in the UK. Before even saying hi to them, I asked them, where's the camera? And this was a Canon 5D Mark I. But that was the closest to these type of cameras, but in digital. It was a full frame digital camera. And I remember till this day, that was the most awesome feeling I had ever felt. Being able to buy kind of my Ferrari of the cameras. Of course, there were better cameras, but that was my Ferrari. It was a really cool moment for myself. And I took hundreds, thousands of pictures with that camera. Everywhere I would go, I would take it. And I didn't care if it could be stolen or not. I just cared that it was with me at all times and I was taking the most amazing pictures. I was doing Flickr, Photolog, whatever social media of the time. And that grew even more into me up to a point that I was thinking about leaving my day job to become a full-time photographer. So at the time I was working for Citibank and I'll save this whole story for a different moment, but I took a backpack trip to Africa. I spent a full month backpacking, took again, hundreds and thousands of pictures. And upon my return, I was going to decide whether I would go back to work or not. And the only thing really holding me back was my girlfriend. So I didn't think twice. I proposed to her. I really thought she was going to say no. And I was ready with my backpack to go back to Africa. For my surprise, she said, yes. 
let's get married once I graduate. Best, coolest feeling I had ever felt up to that point. That changed completely my plans. I had this really cool camera, I knew how to take really nice photographies, and I was really developing this passion towards it that I wasn't going to let it die off. So what I started doing, I started hustling. So I would go to the bank in the mornings, work throughout the day, and then at night I would go to studios, shoot pictures, and I would divide and conquer with my best friend that was also into it. Today he's big in the industry, and I did that for a while. So throughout those years, I was doing studio, I was doing backstage for a Brazilian musician called Marcelo Camelo, and I was having a lot of fun. And as the wedding date was approaching, we had this crazy plan. So we had decided to get married and move out of Brazil. We weren't sure where we were going next, but we knew we were not going to stay in Brazil. So we decided before we go away, why don't we explore more of South America while we're still here? We buy this big car, we outfit with a bed inside of it, and we're gonna explore South America. That's where the GoPro came into play. So I bought all these different accessories. And I have not forgotten, I promised you that I will tell you how you can reconnect with your lost passions through minimalism. But hold on, I promise I will get there. So we went into our honeymoon trip, and then right after that, we were to come to the US. So I sold all my digital gear, and my wife decided to keep her Canon G12, as well as her Diana. This camera is like a Lego camera. You can assemble lots of different attachments in different ways, which pretty much shoots pictures with special effects or defects. It's kind of the analogic version of some Instagram filters, pretty much. And this kit has probably more than 50 items and we probably won't be using anymore. So that's gonna go away as well. And while we're here, I think this Canon G12 is also gonna go. This was the old film camera that she had, we won't be using. I guess this is a little bit of, we got together, we married and we really never rethought these things. So let's rationalize some of these things, get rid of the duplicates, get rid of the ones that are not being used and keep the ones that are going to be used. When we got to the US, the first thing I did, I went and bought another Canon AE1 program. So I have two. And the reason for that, it's a little bit stupid, but it made sense to me. I would usually load one with black and white and the other one with slides. So it could be in the same place doing two different type of medias. And they also serve one as backup for the other. They actually have films in them, which I should actually finish them off. So these are the two ones that are going to be staying for sure. The very next thing I did in the US, I bought another Canon 5D, which I took to several other trips I did since then. But a while back ago, it started acting out and I just sent it back to Canon and didn't bother buy another one because I actually had bought this Canon 80D. And the idea was that my niece really wanted to get into this YouTube thing. And I quickly researched what were good cameras for YouTubers because I only knew cameras for photography. And this one came up, I bought it, and she never really got into YouTube. So I was just stuck with this camera. I still had lenses that would go with it. And I'm actually glad I did because now it's been super, super helpful. And things are really starting to thin out right now, which is exactly what I want. Between the GoPro and all these attachments and underwater and whatever they are, I probably have more than a hundred items. I only needed 59 for this week. So I think I beat the game. But while we are here, let me keep going down my memory lane. I hope you don't mind. And I think the only thing that is really left out here are the Polaroids. So we got a few different ones. We're gonna keep one because we actually use. One cool tradition we have here at home is that whoever stays in our guest bedroom, we make sure we take a good Polaroid picture of them and keep in the bedroom. We also give one to the family. So whenever they go back, they have this memory from having stayed with us. And that's something that we found really special because on the digital times we're living now, we hardly have any printouts anymore. Oh, there's the drone. My amazing wife got me this as a gift a few birthdays ago, and I really like it. I'm not the best pilot yet, but I'll try to use it more often. I think that's it. Because you have stayed this far, if you stick to the end, I'll leave you with two great sources for minimalist. And I will also explain why I chose to dress like this specifically for today's video. So two years ago, my mom had this dream of taking the entire family to visit me and my wife here in the US. And we had just bought our first house and we we're planning to have our first kid. So that was a very important milestone for us. And she actually was able to pull it off. All my family came, it was several of us. It was one of those like once in a lifetime type of deal. And my brother went into this antique store and because he knows I'm really passionate about photography, he bought me these cameras. But this is a Minolta that supposedly you could take underwater or could be exposed to water. And this is probably, I don't know, from back in the 80s or even before that. Pretty cool. I love yellow, so there you have it. And this other one, same style, but a black one. And it said, hey, maybe you can just like put up in a shelf, use as a decor. So I still think about these two. It could be decor, but I can also decorate with the cameras I actually use. But because it was a gift, I will have second thoughts on it. 
and wealth. If it's still not clear on how you can actually reconnect to your lost passions through minimalism, let me put in black and white. You should do what I'm doing right now. You go down your memory lane, you go through your stuff that makes up a hobby or a passion, and you reassess it. And if you have been watching my videos for this past month, you saw that I did that several times. I reassessed hobbies and plans and other things. And for a few of them, it was very easy for me to get rid of. And in this case, as I was going through all of this during the weekend, all these memories and stories came to the surface and back to life. And the feeling that you feel inside tells you whether it's a passion that you still want to pursue or not. And in this case, it definitely is. So what I'm doing here, I'm getting rid of the clutter and keeping what will enable me to actually move forward with my passion and my hobby. And one thing that I'm going to be doing is I found all this undeveloped films that I will send to the lab to process and I'll post the pictures once they are available on Instagram. So please make sure you check my Instagram for these pictures. And now that the game, the challenge is over, the question that remains is, was it worth it? Did it do anything? So come with me for the last part of this video. After 30 days playing the game, what do I think about it? Am I a minimalist now? Are all my problems solved? And the answer is a flat no. Uh, I still have a ton of stuff that I need to get rid of or repurpose or find a better place to store uh, and just literally start using if it hasn't been used for a while. So therefore I'm not a minimalist because I still have too much stuff. 500 items are not nearly enough to even make a difference. I look around uh, and I still get have stuff everywhere. Uh, I may even uh, show to you guys uh, the size of the problem I have. However, uh, it was a really great way of uh, getting in motion. It's like the snowballs. If you have ever watched snow on a hill, you will see that it's pretty much motionless, nothing happening. And then a tiny drop falls from a rock or from a tree. Once it hits the ground, it doesn't really roll, but start moving. And once it picks up more snow, it keeps rolling and then it becomes a snowball. And that keeps increasing in velocity and size. And once it hits the end of the hill, you, do, you don't want to be in front of it. I think you, you get the analogy of the snowball. So hopefully this is a snowball for me and my family. Just the first steps towards it. And if you have uh, been watching minimalism uh, or minimalist videos on the internet, you probably have already heard that minimalism is not really a sprint. It's not just a quick thing you do and that's it and you're done. It's more of a marathon. And I'm really conscious about that. This is a long-term deal for me and this is just the beginning. So as the first step towards this approach, I think the game is really fantastic. It got me going, getting rid of these initial 500 items it makes me feel good. I've already seen some signs of it. So I've started doing more things. I have better frameworks to go about whether I need to make a decision to stop doing something or start doing something, getting rid of something. All of that is already available to me now, which wasn't the case 30 days ago. I would strongly encourage you to play the game if that's something that you can benefit from like I did. My intent for this channel is not to become just a minimalist channel. And to be fair, I'm still in the beginning of my journey. Like I promised, I'm gonna now give you the two great resources of Minimalist and explain why I am actually dressed like this today. Looking good, right? I think after these 30 days, I am a truly minimalist because this is how a minimalist actually dresses. Kidding apart, I want to leave you with these two great YouTubers of Minimalist. One is Matt Diavola, which is a great filmmaker, big inspiration on minimalism as well. And he's been wearing a shirt like this one for I don't know how many days, months or years now. So make sure you check him out, like and subscribe to his channel as well if you haven't already. It's great. And the other one is this other dude, Gabe Bolt. He's a much younger folk. He's also a house hacker, if I'm not mistaken. And he has really great advice if you're just getting started, if you're also interested in living frugally. This is a guy you want to watch as well. And he also likes to wear the same shirt every now and then. Thank you for watching up to this point. If you have liked, please click the like button and also subscribe to get updates to my next videos. I have also chosen two videos here for you. One that YouTube suggests and thinks you should watch next. And the other one is the full playlist for the 30 days minimalist game 
if you haven't watched yet. Thank you and see you soon.